Hey guys, this is a Transformer Gundam, and before I start this video, I just want to say that I have just turned in what would be basically my final assignment in high school, which means I am done with work, basically in high school forever. Now, I still have a week left before I'm completely done, but that assignment that I just turned in was basically my final assignment, which is honestly one of the best feelings knowing that I am done with high school forever. And to celebrate, as promised, I will be reviewing the 1200 Gundam Death Sight. Yep, that's right, the Gundam Death Sight. Now, this Gundam is from Gundam Wing and is honestly one of my favorite Gundam designs of all time for several reasons to choke it into later. But taking a quick look at the box art here, I really love the uh, 90s uh, style it has going on. I mean, this kit was made in the 90s, so it makes sense. but. You can really tell like this is older artwork, but, like you don't really see this nowadays in a lot of the newer Gundam box art, so I really am a big fan of this here, Gundam Death Scythe high grade, back when one, the 100, 1 to 100 scales were actually high grades. And this kit was released in 1995 as you can see, so this is a very 90s kit indeed, this is number 3 in the 1 to 100 high grade wing series. Of course the Street by Bluefin. And here's a look at the kit here, front front and rear shots, some other kits in line, and then some poses of the actual kits with its weapons and accessories and stuff like that, and retail price of 1500 Japanese yen. So without further ado, let's bring in the kit. So here is the kit in all of its 1 to 100 scale glory. And honestly, I am a big fan of this kit, and it surprised me in many ways. Like, the proportions is really spot on to the anime, I, I feel. And is definitely one of the best anime accurate looking kits of the original Gundam Death Scythe on the market right now. Like, it looks really good, and all of these colors were basically straight out of the box. I mean, I did some panel lining and some, like, details, but, um,. This is basically all plastic. I didn't put on any of the stickers except for the uh, eye stickers and the, the camera stickers. But other than that, this is out of the box. So it looks really good out of the box. I mean, some colors that it is missing is that um, the uh, these parts on the shoulder are supposed to be gray. Basically, though, besides that, this thing is completely accurate out of the box. So, yeah, th that is really cool especially for the time and I know a lot of the newer kits actually have a lot of stickers so this is just awesome and already it just blows me away and of course another good kit or well good or bad thing depending on your perspective is the amount of panel lining details you can get in there like just look at the legs just the amount of lining and everything is amazing especially if you enjoy panel lining like I do then you will have fun with this kit. Like, there's so many different lines and groups you can get in and make it look really nice and detailed. I mean, as you can see, my power lining isn't perfect, but um, I think it looks really good. And it's actually been a while since I've panel lined anything, so this was good practice for me. But it it just, I, I really enjoy it. Like, some people might say, oh, it's excessive detail. Like, you don't need it. But I, I say the more detail, the, the better. So. Um, this kit is just filled with details all over. Got a, nice, a lot of lines. Looks really cool. And um, some parts that I did actually, well, not really paint, just uh, detailed a little was on the face, the uh, red parts there. Decided to add because I, I just thought it looks cool. And also on the sides of the faces here, uh, side of the face here, sorry. Um, you can see the uh, red bit. And the and the machine guns. I'm pretty sure that's what that was. Yeah, machine guns. And then also, right there on the face, I also painted that. Well, not really painted. I just kind of filled it in with the red pin that I had. And then the uh, crotch uh, symbol right here, also uh, by me, because the steer wasn't really good. But uh, besides that, and besides all the pound lining you see, um, I had, didn't really do anything else to this kit. So yeah, just from looks alone, this kit gets a big thumbs up for me. So um, let's move on to the articulation.
Now moving on to articulation, it has the typical 90s kit articulation, but it's not bad. So getting started here, the head can move up a little, down a little, side to side. Rotates but on full 360 because it hits the, uh, what I'm assuming are guns right here. So it can only go about that far and that far. Arms, of course, rotates for full 360. Goes the uh, uh, arms, sorry, they go out that much. And then there's also some rotation right here at the elbow joints. Also, the shoulders can move independently from the arms. And also, this part of the uh, shoulder can also move up and down as well, which is nice uh, for posing. And then these thrusters can also move side to side and um huh i don't know if there's supposed to be thrusters there or not but anyways um yeah i don't think there's supposed to be thrusters there it might be wrong i have to go back and check the instructions but these ones can move i'm guessing if there were they these ones wouldn't be able to move anyways um but the elbow can bend at a 90 degree angle maybe a little more than that but not bad and it can also bend backwards a little bit um, and then the wrist are, can go full 360 we go around go up and down and then the hands are the typical high grade 1 to 100 hands where it's the uh, three finger split that can go up and down the thumb I mean the index moves independently then the thumb not move that's just solid so yeah this is typical high uh 100 high grade hands for the time and i think the even the early master grade hands are uh, had this type or something similar to this type of hands here um the waist can rotate about that much that's about it before it runs into the backpack here um i'm pretty sure if you took this part off of it be able to turn a full 360 might be wrong so let me just test that yeah it can so it can move a little uh sorry it can move a full 360 but it is limited by the backpack here so let me just put that back on here There we go. Sorry about that. It's a little hard to do on camera, but moving on here, these uh, actually no, sorry, yeah, no, these actually are se are separate. Uh, I wasn't sure if I actually cut them to make them separate or not, because that's what I do with most high grade kits, anyways. But these were actually separate pieces, which is really nice, especially for the time. So these move independently, separately from each other, and then the side skirts can move of course and then the uh, back skirts no movement at all so the legs can go out only that much which eh, it's not too much i feel like it could have been more but it's, that's all right it can go up that well okay it can go up that much but then the uh, skirt armor front skirt armor uh comes off here and actually i can test to see uh yeah, these are separate pieces. So, let me just see if I can just get that back in there. There we go. So, maybe we'll see about that far with the skirt armor still attached. And then there's a little bit of rotation in there because it's just a ball joint. And for the uh, knee bend, it goes, I'd say maybe a little more than 90 degree angle, but still not bad. Um, and then the foot is on, I'm pretty sure it's like on a double ball joint. Oh, it can go up pretty high back a little bit, but the, uh, this part, uh, gets in the way of it going back a little, so it can only go back a little bit, rotates a little, and then the, uh, shin, or shin guard can move up and down a little. So that's about it for the articulation. It's not bad. And for the backpack, the uh, thruster can actually move a little bit. So, yeah, before I forget, this part moves. And now that's that's it for the articulation. So not bad, but not the greatest either. So, 
Now, let's move on to the accessories, and this is where this kit really gets good. So moving on to the accessories, this is where this kit really starts to shine, of course. I say that as the kit falls over, but um, let's just let's put them down here for now. But getting started with, of course, uh, the classic shield here. It looks really good, and these chrome parts look really good. Um, it's got a nice shine to it, but this is the shield. Uh, all of this is plastic, none of this is sticker. Of course, I did a little panel lining, and then this, of course, opens on a gear system, so they open together, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, so this is a really nice shield. It plugs into the arm right there. As you can see, this just plugs in as so. And of course, it can rotate a little. And uh, moving on, of course, we go on to his main weapon, which is the scythe. So, so this is the scythe. It is really nice. I really love it. Um, the whole scythe is made out of the uh, same chrome plastic, which looks really cool. Because of this really awesome beam effect part. And it actually comes with several different ones. So this is just the standard, you know, death scythe scythe that will, will look like in the anime. And the translucent green looks really nice, and it has a lot of great detail in there as well. I don't know if you're able to see that, but it looks really good. You're gonna see like all like the energy waves and stuff like that. And then this can move up and down a little, not too much. And yeah, it's got a little. You can see a little piston thing in there moving. So that's pretty cool. And then, of course, it can be detached. And now let's get into the other group beam effect parts that comes with so it also comes with this bigger version of the site which is looks it's just badass it's so awesome looking it is a lot bigger compared to the just standard site as you can see here but this is just a beast um, so we can just plug it into the site there and it just just looks Awesome. Kind of reminds me of in, uh, don't know if you've ever seen Soul Eater, but the, uh, I don't remember exactly what the move was called, but I think it was called like the G Genie Striker or something like that. But whenever Mako uses that special move, that makes uh, Soul's scythe grow like bigger. And it just looks totally awesome. It's kind of what this reminds me of. Um, but yeah, so this is really cool looking as well. But I like using the uh, just standard scythe just because I like keeping it anime accurate. But this is still really cool looking. But we are not done here with the effect parts as we get yet another scythe effect here. When this is just like a smaller, it's more like a dagger um, looking scythe than the other two. And you can just see for a comparison here, this is definitely a lot smaller than this one. And this can just plug in to so here like so. So, eh, I mean, this one's all right, but I prefer using these two a lot more. But uh, this is still a cool effect part, I guess. So yeah, um, let me just put the standard one on here. And he can hold it, of course, in his hands, but not not it's not the greatest because it just slides in there. There's nothing really to hold it in place, so it usually just sinks right to the bottom. But you can still get them to do some cool poses, as you see once I get into the posing section. But yeah, he can hold it pretty good, well, no problems really at all. And getting into some other effect parts that he comes with, he of course comes with the uh, the famous. Um, I don't know what you call, I guess the dagger effect for the uh, shield, where, where if you don't remember in the anime, uh, the shield will fly out, and then this will open up, and then there'll be a beam right there, and let's just see if I can attach this real fast. So it'll just be like flying at enemy moments, so it'll be like spinning like, and then it'll just go right through the enemies, and it's pretty cool looking, so yeah. Um, really cool looking, and then I guess if you wanted to, um, you could use it, like, just as that, as, like, a slashing weapon, like, phew, something like that, but 
Yeah, so that's a really cool looking um, thing accessory that also comes with this kit. And of course, it's a iconic part of the uh, mobile suit. And the final two effect parts are probably, I think, one of the coolest ones. And it's really unique to this kit. And these are actually for the uh, shoulders. Um, these are actually to make, to make it look like, I guess it's like thrusting energy. And I was actually right, there was only one thruster there. This is actually for this part that I remembered. So this plugs in here. And this just plugs into the there. And now it has some really cool, well, really cool looking um, wing looking effects. See if I can get it to plug in there. Well, here, let me just do this off camera real fast, but it will, it will look really cool, trust me. So here he is with the uh, thruster effect part, and I just think it looks awesome. Uh, it, it definitely, I think, is a big selling point uh, for this kit. It's just all the awesome effect parts you get here. As you can see, you, can, you get a total of one, two, if I can find all of them, oh, three, three being uh, scythe effect parts. You get one effect part for the shield, and then you get two for the shoulders. So I think this has the most amount of translucent plastic I've ever seen on a Gundam kit. Which, I mean, of course I'm wrong, but from the ones I've owned, this definitely has come with, came with the most effect parts. And they all just look really good and unique in its own way. Like, uh, this is something I would never expect out of any kit. Like, especially a kit from this time. It's just really awesome that Bandai decided to include all of these awesome parts and different beam effects. So, that is a big plus, I think. And this just really adds to the badass factor of this kit, I think. And, um, actually one thing that I did notice while I was... Uh, just going over this kit and reviewing it was actually if you couldn't tell that this leg started splitting a little and in, um, in some parts of the video you could just tell it was like wobbling around but that was actually just because the ball joint just came loose so I had to uh, fix it I just uh, made sure it was back in place it's not this part back together and now it's nice not wobbly and joints good again so um, yeah all in all this kit is really good, definitely met, actually, it went past my expectations for a kit of this age. Um, so now for this final part, I'm just going to be doing some poses and size comparisons. So for some quick size comparisons, first let's compare him with a 1 to 100 kit. Here he is next to the Master Grade um, Mark II Titans version. And as you can see, this this is actually a shorter 1 to 100 kit, which I think actually fits in the scale because the mobile suits in Gundam Wing were actually uh, a lot shorter compared to a lot of the other mobile suits like the uh, Mark II here. So this actually, yeah, it towers over the... Uh, old 1 to 100 high grade death side pretty well but um yeah i think that's pretty accurate to the show actually so that's not a bad thing and then comparing it to some other kits here actually a comparison i want to make um just for me is actually uh here he is with the remains of my 1 to 144 scale no grade death scythe and uh you're probably wondering why he's in this kind of state, but the 1 to, 1, or 1 to 144 scale no grade death scythe was actually my first kit I ever built. I was probably around 10 when I built this kit actually. So that is why the death scythe, or the death scythe design is such a, uh, well that's why I love the design so much, is just because this was my gateway into Gundam my gateway into Gunpla, this kit basically changed my life and made me 
who I am today with me loving anime, Gundam, Gunpla. But yeah, since I was a 10 year old kid, I like to play with my kids. And sadly, this one broke, but I remember I had some pretty good adventures with this kit while it lasted, so... This was basically kind of like a tribute to my first kit anyways, which is why I wanted to get to one... Wanted to get the 1 to 100 kit in the first place. And, uh, if I'm being honest, this kit is a hundred times better than this kit, which is understandable, because this is like a $5 kit, this is like, probably like a $15 kit, but... Yeah, so... Here is that comparison here, and then um, just because I have some kids lying around here, here he is compared to the 1 to 144 scale high grade God Gundam, which I will be reviewing later. And uh, let's see, here he is with one of my old customs that I've done. Uh, the uh, I don't I haven't really thought of a name for this guy. I guess the Skeleton Zaku here. Uh, so yeah, this is another Hybrid Zaku kit. And... Um, here he is with my custom GM, which his other arm broke off, so I'm in the middle of trying to fix that. But yeah, so... That's basically it. So now, just to close off the video, I'm just going to be throwing in some poses. Just to show you exactly what all this kit can do, and how you can really use all of these effect parts to get some really cool looking poses. So I will put some pictures at the end of the video just showing all the different poses that you can do with this guy, but give my final thoughts on this kit. This kit blew me away. Like, I really just love this kit for, of course, personal reasons, and just because, like, it just, I honestly wasn't expecting too much out of this kit, but it just blew all my expectations out of the water. Now, starting off with the accessories, it came with way more than what I thought. All of the effect parts are really cool. The colors on this kit is almost spot on. Pretty much no stickers or anything like that are needed. Minor painting, of course, if you want to make it look 100% anime accurate, but just out of the box, like this kit will not disappoint. Um, now for some bad part, bad things about this kit, uh, of course the articulation could be better, but you can't expect too much from a kit of this age, and also while posing the, uh, the legs, that can be a little difficult, uh, cause sometimes the leg joints will be loose, and especially with the, uh, the joint here, um, the, uh, the leg joint. Um, it could be a little loose when if you're trying to get like a straight pose, but then just starts bending on its own. But other than that, like, and of course I, st I sometimes have some problem with the, the feet. Yeah, but other than that, this kit is just really good. Overall, a like, well-rounded kit, especially for the price, for the time. It's just, I, I'd say this is definitely one of the best kits to come out of this era of 90s kits, especially in this Gundam Wing 1 to 100 line. Uh, but yeah, so I would highly recommend this, especially if you are a fan of the original Death Scythe design or just Gundam Wing in general. Um, this is definitely a kit that you cannot pass up. And as of today, there has not been an update of the original. And this is the original Gundam Death Scythe design. I'm not talking about the Hell version, the and this Waltz version, or the uh, Katoki version, but just the original Death Scythe. This is the best incarnation and kit form that we have so far. And while I did enjoy my old 1 to 144 scale, scale no grade version, this kit is just better in every way. It just only cost a couple more dollars than this kit. So I give this kit probably I'd say 8.5 out of 10 just because of the nostalgia for me anyways um, and just because of I love the design and just everything out of this kit is great I think so that's about it for this review hopefully you enjoyed it and of course if you want to see any more pictures or of my different kits especially this guy then you'll check out my Instagram at Gundam Collector 
Um, I'll put a link in the description below. So stay tuned for my next review, which is the 1 to 144 scale high grade FC Got Gundam. And uh, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, leave a comment. And yeah, this is the Transformer Gundam signing out. Oh, actually, one more thing I forgot to mention is it actually actually does come with two more accessories. These are just minor accessories, but they're still pretty cool. You get the condensed version of the scythe. And then this part is actually so you can um, store it in the back of the uh, kit here. Um, here, let me just try to move this out of the way just to quickly show you. This just plugs into the, uh, the back uh, skirt armor. I'm going to just do this off camera real fast. And there you go, as you can see, it plugs in there and stays in there really well. It's not going to fall out if I shake the kit. And yeah, so this is just a really cool another accessory that Bandai didn't have to include, but they so graciously did include with this kit. So yeah, now that's about it for this video, and I'll see you in the next video.